food styling tips like crushed ice from the hardware store or a garden center or a really weird person's house. Hi, this is JP Morgan. And I'm Ed Rudolph. Today on The Silent Lens, Ed's gonna share with us his top 10 tricks for styling food. He's an incredible food photographer here in the Los Angeles area. You're gonna love these. Food styling tip number one, how to make fake condensation. So what we're gonna do today is create fake condensation on the glass that will last forever, at least for several days, definitely long enough for you to get the shot. So we want to um, have a very clean glass, so we'll wash it in really hot water, make sure it's totally dry on the outside. Uh, second step is we'll cover the top with a little piece of cardboard and we'll spray the outside with a product called uh, Crystal Clear, which Krylon make. So it's basically a clear spray paint and what it does is it allows the glass to have just a little bit of a texture on the outside of it so that the next thing that we spray on it doesn't want to just run just off. Run off. Yeah. yeah. And the second step is we'll take a little sprayer and we'll mix uh, Karo syrup, which is a corn syrup you can buy at any grocery store and we'll mix that uh, with water at a 50-50 ratio and just shake it up in the sprayer. Then we'll go out and spray it uh, all the way around on the glass and the more we spray, the more the, the droplets will, will beat up. Number two, real condensation. So why real versus fake? Well, real looks real. So basically what we have is our beer here. Today we're gonna do a beer pour. So that we have this in the fridge, get it nice and cold, then we put it in the freezer for about 20 minutes to get even further even cold, colder. even colder, yeah. So what we're gonna do is just open this up like we normally would, and we'll pour it in the glass here. Now the glass is not chilled, it's just room temperature, because we want the beard to do the work as far as actually chilling the glass. So what we've got starting to happen here is what we call sort of a bloom happening with a nice little condensation happening there. And what we can do to kind of speed that along is just take a drinking straw here, kind of blow on it a little bit. So as you blow on the, your warm, the warmth of your breath, it starts to make the condensation build. Exactly. It's a good way to get dizzy. Yeah, but, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so we're just starting to get this more and more build up here. And then usually if the colder the beer it is, it'll do a little bit more. And then, you know, the more you breathe on it, it just yes. can build up more and more of those drops until they finally start dripping. <laughs> so get it in the freezer to where it's almost ready to freeze. Yeah. Pour it in, then just right. blow that warm air on it and you get condensation. There you go. Number three, fake ice. Yeah, so obviously real ice melts pretty quickly, right? And yes, so sometimes we might want to have something that'll last a little bit longer, especially if it's out a little bit out of focus in the background, we just kind of want to have that element. So what we can do is use a fake ice and obviously it's not going to melt and last forever. So we've got two different kinds of ice here. These are acrylic cubes, and these are nice because they're pretty cheap, they're very durable. The only problem with these is they don't float. Now real ice floats, so okay. what this will do is sink to the bottom of the glass and it doesn't always look quite as real. So you gotta fill the glass all the way up with them. Yeah, and then, so it, then it's like, why is there ice at the bottom of the glass? Because in real life it'll always you know, float to the top. So it doesn't quite look real. It doesn't quite look real. So this is, these are actual pieces of silicone that was poured into a mold, and then you can actually take these. So and, they mold them like this? Well, it's actually in a big block, and then you just sort of tear just that off. Just break them off? Just break it off into these kind of nice random organic chunks. And as you can see, like this is sort of a big piece, and I can just take this and oh, kind of just, just break it oh, up. Wow. So now we get all these little shards and things like that. So all we gotta do is just pour, put them in our glass. It's also kind of nice because they're all different shapes and it kind of gives it a more of a, a nice natural look to it. And this will all just float up then? So it'll just float up, yeah. And but, you get this from Studio Specialties, right? Yeah, it's called uh, Special Effects Unlimited. Special yeah. Effects Unlimited. But they pour it into a big mold and you buy it by the pound and then you can just, just break it off. Number four, putting a card behind the beer to reflect some light through it. Or a Coke or wine or any of those things, right? Yeah, so basically to get the beverage to really kind of come to life in the photo, liquid in it wants to have light coming through the glass, kind of backlighting the liquid to, to give it that nice glow. And that's the kind of look we're used to seeing in a lot of times in beer ads or Coke ads and things like that. So one of the things we can do is take a second glass that's identical and we can lay it down on top of a uh, what, either a white piece of paper or sort of a shiny silver card or something like that and we'll trace 
the paper, trace around the glass onto the paper to get the exact shape of the glass. We'll cut around that and then we can actually put it behind the beer or the Coke, whatever it is you're trying to shoot. And what it will do is actually take the light that's hitting and kind of bounce it back and transmit it through the liquid and kind of give it that nice glow. Number five, getting the perfect head of foam on a beer. So this is the beer that we poured a few minutes ago uh, and it's a little past its prime as you can see. It doesn't have... Doesn't have the foam anymore. The, yeah, but we want to revitalize it a little bit and give it that nice thick head of foam. So a little trick we could do is take some salt here, shake a little salt in. I see it coming in, yeah, and, yeah. And so we'll take our spoon and kind of stir that in and whip it up a little so bit. So what is that, like a chemical reaction or something? Some kind of reaction, as you can see, it foams right up. Whoa, and oh, there's and the there's perfect head experiment. of beer that goes right <laughs> over the top. <laughs> wow, that's way more effective than I thought. <laughs> take so just two. A little bit. <laughs> so a little bit of salt, whip it a little bit, and that, that head comes right up. Yeah. Number six, melting butter on a muffin. <laughs> So what we're gonna do today is try to recreate as if this was a hot muffin right out of the oven and we wanna have that perfect, slightly yeah. melted, slightly oozing pat of butter. Rather than heating the muffin up, what we're gonna do is actually heat the butter up. Oh, okay. So that it kind of melts off a little bit. So first thing I'm gonna do is take the muffin, we've already peeled the paper off, and I'm just gonna kind of tear it here. And the reason I'm doing that rather than cutting it is it just gives it a little bit more of a nice appealing organic look. So it with feels little, more natural. Little nooks and crannies and things like that there. Yeah. So I'm just gonna set that aside here for a second. So this is just a regular stick of butter. And what I've done is it was already cold but I put it in the freezer for about half an hour just to get it really cold because we want it to be really hard and solid for when we cut it. So just got a sharp chef's knife here. I'm gonna cut off a couple pats just to have some to work with. Usually the end has got a few marks on it and things, so maybe we don't want to use that one anyway. Okay, get that off the knife. Now the next trick we want to do is create kind of like a uh, biased cut on the edges here. So what we can do is cut it at a, about a 45 degree angle. Oh, so just cut the hard edge off? Right, let me grab a paper towel here and wipe the knife off every time. So we're gonna cut a little bit of an, of an angle on all four corners, just so that it kind of tapers down there a little bit. Okay, so now that we're gonna get our butter out of the way here, get this other piece out of the way we're not using, go back to our muffin here. So we'll carefully Put this on our muffin there. So now the, the last piece of this is to use a heat gun that we have. So I'm just gonna use this on low heat. Okay. And. Oh, nice. This would also work great for pancakes, uh, any, anything where you wanna have that melted butter, baked potato maybe. Mm-hmm. So how do you know when you wanna stop so it just doesn't melt away? Well, about there is good. I mean, it'll keep melting a tiny bit after uh, after you stop, but there you have it. It's a nice little excellent butter melt there. So it gives it that, that effect of you know having that hot, hot warm hot muffin. muffin. Number seven, another way to bring more life to your drink shots is to dilute them with water. Yeah, so our typical, if we wanna have say soda, red wine, things like that in a shot, those actually are pretty dark liquids and the camera really doesn't capture the color of them very well because they are so dark. So one thing we can do for say Coke is we can dilute it usually about 50-50 with water. So I'm just gonna take my can of Coke here. We'll pour, uh, this is about a 16 ounce glass, so I'll pour about eight ounces of Coke. Pour about eight ounces of water. And these uh, measuring cups are really nice because they have a nice pour spout on them. So to our eye, this looks pretty light. It looks lighter than, than it most. It does. But to the camera, it, it helps just give it a little more and light. And there's our fake ice that's floating. Floating, exactly. There you are. Number eight, giving old coffee a fresh poured look. So right, so we've got our coffee here. This has been sitting in the mug for quite some time and we notice it's just got really kind of flat. It just isn't very dynamic in a photograph. 
And if you've ever noticed at a diner when they pour you a cup of coffee, it's got all that and those nice little bubbles around the edge there and it really gives it a little more appetite appeal, so to speak. So what I've done here is just poured a little extra coffee in this uh, measuring cup here. This is gonna take a little squirt of dish soap here, it doesn't take much. So this is gonna create some bubbles, obviously. Oh, it's interesting. Soap, but there, it's coffee colored okay. soap, right? Because we're used coffee. And then what we can do is just take a bit of these on a spoon and kind of layer that in to the cup. And we can kind of style a little bit once it's in there. But what this will do is create that nice foam on the edge and it will last for quite some time. So you just kind of play with it. It's usually nice to have it mostly around one side of the cup, not all the way around. Mm -hmm. just a little, it looks a little more natural, but there you go. Number nine, how to create fake crushed ice from a hardware store. <laughs> so maybe you want to have a shot where you have sort of like a bucket of beers or some fake ice, fake crushed ice to put sort of like some seafood on or some shrimp. And obviously that melts very quickly. We don't want that because we might want to take a little extra time with it. So you can buy this at a nursery. These are called uh, water storing crystals. So we're gonna take our bowl here, pour some of this in. Now this stuff is uh, kind of a little goes a long way and you wanna make sure never to eat this because it'll <laughs> keep absorbing all you the water in your body. Up. Yeah, that's a bad idea. So we're gonna start with a little bit of water here and pour this in and just start stirring this up. And this will keep absorbing more and more water the longer we go. So it's just kind of a trial and error process. We'll keep adding this here. So as you can see, it just keeps absorbing, getting bigger and bigger as we go. And you could use this as fake snow. You could use this as crushed ice. Okay, so now we've got sort of our crushed ice look. And so we could take, for example, some beer bottles, just kind of nestle them in there a little bit. It will kind of stick to the to the, to the bottle itself, which is kind of nice. Kind of gives it more of that lived in look there. And another thing you can do with this stuff is actually if you have a freestanding shot of a beer bottle, you can kind of get this to stick on there and it kind of looks like little pieces oh, of so ice. Oh, just pull the ice out of it, yeah. Right. It's kind of got them, them stuck to it. And that's, again, will stay forever. Plenty of time to get your shot. Number 10. How to make the ingredients of your soup come up to the top so you can see them. Make your soup look more hearty and full and cool. So this is basically a can of soup that we poured into a bowl and it looks pretty okay, but everything in there is sort of sinking to the bottom as it naturally would. And we kind of want to make- Like all the noodles and all the, the carrots, noodles, the carrots, chicken, everything. We kind of want to make that a little more apparent. Now we could just take broth out and make, you know, less than the ratio of the broth but that's gonna lower the liquid level in the soup bowl and we want it to make it look also at the same time nice and full. So what we can do is either take some marbles or we can take these fake ice cubes and we can put this underneath, tuck these down in. And what this will start to do is create a little bit of a platform for everything to sit on top of. But as you can see, the noodles are starting to come to the top a little bit more. Nice thing about these ice cubes as they are clear and so we're not going to see them in there. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we probably have a little too much liquid level in the bowl now. So what we can do is just take a little measuring cup and a spoon, just kind of take some of this off here. But this is a way to give, you know, have your bowl be nice and full, but still, you know, have everything showing to the top. It's all there. the yummy stuff's on top. Right. So you can just kind of play with it and you can kind of rearrange the ice cubes down there and sort of style your ingredients on top here. So if you love the things you've learned here today about doing food styling, you're gonna even love more Ed's Food Photography Download where it teaches you how to do food photography. Yeah, we're gonna shoot seven complete setups. We're gonna work with a food stylist to show you all her tips and tricks for how she does her food styling, show you all my lighting techniques that I like to do, uh, work with natural light and strobe, uh, show you all the different gizmos that we work with in the studio from the clamps and all the reflectors, things like that. And we're going to even get into retouching and a section on business, making more money and getting your name out there in the food photography world. So if you want to learn about food photography, get over to theslimelens.com, click on the store and buy Ed's download. It'll teach you the things you need to know to be able to start to shoot food. So keep those cameras rolling. And keep on clicking.